<laughs> Episode four. Yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Barb. And I'm Cynthia. We're sisters. We own a yarn shop called River City Yarns in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of fun. Yeah. And we were here today to have a show you some new yarns, talk about what we've been up to, a few works in progress, and um, talk all about knitting. Yeah. Right? And yarn. Knitting and yarn. And yarn. Yeah. And this, this month may be a bit of geeky stuff, too. Right. Okay. We're pretty excited, and we have a whole bunch of stuff for you today. Oh, goodness. It's going to take forever, Barb. No. Yeah. No. 30 <laughs> minutes tops. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, here, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Nice what mug a, you've got there. I know. This is yeah. one of our stash acquisitions mm-hmm. from Ruway, Minnesota. We we're at the yes. Minnesota Knitters Guild. We are now officially members of the Minnesota Knitters Guild. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think we had to become members just so we could get a better rate, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. To get in, to get into the classes, you had to be a guild member, but that's fine. Yeah. We're, we're happy. We we met some really amazing people while we, we were did. there. Yeah. We yeah, did. That's good. So people ask us, why why would you go to the Minnesota Knitters Guild Yarn Over event? They right. It, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We went to learn. You know, we have this thing about um, we want to treat ourselves every year we go somewhere and learn something mm-hmm. new. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's and part of and meet other instructors, see who's out there doing cool things, mm-hmm. who might we like to bring back to Edmonton. Right. So it's totally professional development and kind of like instructor recruitment. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you got pretty excited too, right, when you saw the class list? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we took two classes. Right. We took a class on making plaid. Yes. Knitting plaid. Yeah. Yeah. Our instructor was uh, Teresa Shabus. Yes. And, um, oh yeah, you're going to show... We, got, we have samples. How yeah. about if we show some samples? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Will anybody be able to see these? You know what, what we should do maybe is take some pictures and insert them into okay. the video so you can see them a little bit better. But essentially, we took a class where you had to provide a couple of swatches. You had to start mm-hmm. with a couple of swatches. And um, then Teresa showed us... And these are the ones we did in class. So mm-hmm. We were actually knitting them. And Teresa showed us how to kind of embellish... Um, a pre-knit stripe with horizontal um, right. features, so it looks like plaid, and it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, like, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this was really cool. This was a swatch that was knit, and every um, four stitches we did a purl row, and then we laddered up. In the, mm-hmm. Okay, so there's, there's the purl rows. Here's your purl rows oh. here, mm-hmm. and then we took a crochet hook and laddered up. Other colored yarns mm-hmm. to in make that, the, yeah, make vertical lines, and then I kind of went a little crazy because, you know, I'm waiting for other people to catch up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's fun, and I really like this one. This one is just kind of a small swatch, but I'm thinking I'm I've got a idea in my mind about what I'm going to do. Yes. I think this has got to be a cowl. And, yes. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And that was lots of fun. Teresa also, when we found out Teresa has a pattern in this book that we right. have here in the store, 60 Quick Baby Blankets, and the baby blanket Let's just see it. I happens to be <gasps> plaid. plaid. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Picture perfect plaid. Yeah. Pattern number 39. So I think I think that's something we should probably look at doing too. Yeah. Wouldn't that look really cute as a lap blanket in Christmas colors or something for, our, you know, the cabin or yes. just in the summertime, just a nice little plaid blanket. Epic. Baby or not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then tell, tell everybody what we were knitting our swatches with. What yarn? Oh, Adam oh. or Eden. <laughs> we had the yeah. we had the nicest yarn Marino for Cashew. knitting in this class of anybody who was there. Yeah, right? it was I mean, pretty special. Yeah, because we wanted to test it out and maybe yeah. use it in a project. So why not use a yarn you know that's really nice? So yeah. a baby blanket in in Eden would be so gorgeous. Very I nice. Don't, I don't know how much it would cost, but I think it might be. A pretty spectacular baby blanket. It's just money. <laughs> Yarn is cheaper than therapy. <laughs> it's too, yeah, what's mine? Life's too short and it was cheap yarn. There you go. So we got these mugs at a yarn shop mm-hmm. in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. 
right? Right. Yeah. What's it called? Amazing Threads. Amazing Threads, right? yes. That was a really nice store. And who was the one who gave us the tour? The girl that... Oh, Angel. Angel. Mm -hmm. The Hi, store Angel. manager. Yeah. <laughs> we had She's such beautiful. a good time at your shop. It was great. Yeah, and you, you brought some things that you bought there. Yes. Yeah, you want to show them all? I forgot to bring that one hat. Oh, Darn. did you? Yeah. Okay. I bought some wool folk that I'm dying to knit. Right. Um, Right, okay, well, do you have uh, anything from that? Joke? Well, you know, the mug was my yes. special thing. The so mug was mine, too. This was our, yes, and you did buy a kit. But um, we tried to restrain ourselves in the store <laughs> and maybe just go home with a few things that we couldn't get anywhere else. Right. right. That's very helpful. Yeah, it was, too. Teresa also gave me a prize in class. Oh, yes, because yeah. you asked the best question. <laughs> so I got this cute little um, What's in there? project bag. <gasps> well, I got up. some Marketplace stash <gasps> in here. Should we okay. show that? Yes, okay. yeah, let's do it. We'll just so jump right uh, we into went it. when we went to the marketplace at the Minnesota Knitters Guild yarn over, and we saw this amazing retailer yeah. named. Um, Gotten her first name, but Sun Valley Fibers. That's her company name. And they, uh, she and her husband had this gorgeous booth, um, and I couldn't not go home. Look at the minis without some sock yarn. Um, and yeah, and then she had these minis, and she, she had a really good story about this. She said, you know, they don't do dye lots. When they, um, when they get down to the last ball of any particular yarn, they just split them up into minis, and she had this wall of minis, and yeah. she said, you know. Once they're gone, they're gone. She's not remaking them. There's no particular dye lot on them. That's just the way they are. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to get some really colorful ones oh. and do heels and toes. Look at that. And socks. Those are great. Yeah. yeah. And you got a kit from her as well. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. I'll show show us. you mine. <clears throat> okay. She had these kits for, um, everybody knows, on the spice market. It's a new a shawl by Martina Bam. Okay. And um, so I saw this. It goes with this. And these, for those of you who know this shawl, this is the perfect color combo. So inside here is, I had the list somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's um, seven different, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different colors. And then this one, which is the base. And so this is a gradient kit out of merino cashmere nylon fingering mm -hmm. weight. Feel this? Yes. Oh, yes. It's so All soft. of her yarns were so gorgeous. Yeah, she yes. has really, really nice and they um, have yarns. They have sheep. Um, she, we asked her where her yarns were milled, and mm -hmm. she said they're all milled domestically, so either in Canada or in the United States. Um, and they're just, they're so squishy and so soft. And she and her husband do such a beautiful job of dyeing yeah. that it was really hard to not buy a whole bunch of yarn. Right. These are available on her website That's as right. well. So just go to um, sunvalleyknits.com. Sun, Sun Valley Fibers. Sunvalleyfibers.com. Yeah. And I looked them up last night. They yeah. have these on their website. You can buy this kit. You can buy it like just by itself with this, with these colors. And a skein of this. This one's called Antler, and this one's called Corna Cornucopia. Right. So um, go get this. This is so pretty. We'll put all of this information in the show notes right underneath the video. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like you have to go somewhere else to see it. Right. Everything will be right down below. Um, you can just click on that Show More button, and mm -hmm. we'll have links and everything for you. And you can get the pattern with it, too, if you want. There's two options, a kit right. with pattern and without pattern. Right. And when we were visiting with her, we also met this other um, woman named Corey Eichelberger. I think yeah. I, I'm going to put her name in the show notes as well. She was a lovely woman. They, she and a friend have just written a book of knitting patterns, and she told us about it. And it just, you know, sometimes you meet people whose energy is just so contagious that you walk away feeling like you've yeah. heard a lot of stuff, and um, she you came, just feel energized. She came up to us and she said, "Hi, I seen you guys on the Grocery Girls. <laughs> Say hi to Tracy and Jody for us." Yes, yeah, yeah. it was really cute. 
Um, so we do have another video that we've um, posted up that has highlights from our trip to uh, Minneapolis. So you can watch that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but while we were at Sun Valley Fibers, uh, they gave us some yarn to give right. away on our podcast. And so... Um, we have some. Sure. We have some really nice yarns. Yeah. They just they just you know said pick some colors and so we thought well let's pick um, colors that um, are in a nice range. You know mm -hmm. they're not gradient or anything like that. So this one is delphinium. It's an eighty twenty merino nylon super high twist yarn that'd be perfect for socks. Yeah. Look at how look at how this is really twisted. Yeah. I bet it's you these nice. really last long. Right. Time, yeah. Right? I mean it. The merino socks are nice, but they do get holes earlier, mm -hmm. so that high twist is important. And this is also um, an 8020 merino nylon called Flamenco. Mm -hmm. This one is an 801010 merino cashmere nylon, so it's nice. that MCN. And this one's called Taking It Easy. And then we have. Yeah, you can feel uh -huh. you can feel the cashmere in here. Looks yeah, just a little bit softer. And this is also an MCN uh, merino cashmere nylon, but this is a little thicker gauge, I believe. Seven to eight stitches per inch. I think that's what this is, right? 28. Yeah, so this is like a sport weight. And this one's called Strut Your Stuff. And it's just so gorgeous mm -hmm. and soft. Beautiful. Yeah. So we have some ideas on what we might do with these yarns in terms of giving them away on the podcast. So we'll come back to those. Great. Let's put them there. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, we had a great time at the Yarn Over. We met, uh, we met some friends that we... You know, known in the past, mm -hmm. we, we had a chat with Lucy Neepy. We um, ran into Sylvia. Sylvia Harding, yes, mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun with her. And then I introduced um, Barb to an instructor that I'd met in Seattle named mm -hmm. Laura Ricketts. She and was then, lovely. Yeah, and then we made the acquaintance of a man named Lars Reigns, and he just had us cracking up the whole weekend. Yeah, he was a lot of fun. A, a really fun instructor. So again, um, check out our Celebrity Knit Night uh, video from... Minneapolis and you'll get to hear us talking to all those folks mm -hmm. okay and then you started barn stable just before it. we left and yeah. you finished it on our trip mm -hmm. congratulations yeah I was so it's... jealous when you cast off the plane oh because I was still working on my socks yeah <laughs> it's beautiful yeah it was it was fun I love knitting this pattern this is a mosaic I'll just show you kind of the whole thing mm -hmm. So it goes out like that. This ends just one single color. But it was so much fun to knit. Look at the back side. Let's just hold it the other way for sure. a second. Because you know the back looks great. It's pretty too. It does. I mean it's not as it's not well, as spectacular as the front, but And when I first saw this I thought, oh okay, it's a lot of stranded color work, right? But it's not. It's mosaic knitting. So you're only working with one color at a time. So you, you're working two rows with one color, two rows with the other, but it's slip stitches. And so that's what creates this patterning. I'm definitely going to knit another one of these. Yeah. yeah. You liked I it. I loved it. Yeah. I just love the pattern. It was fun, hey? Yeah. And I love this shape, too, of a shawl. You know, it's kind of, it's a little mm -hmm. bit different than yeah. the real triangle ones. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Here, we'll just fix me up. Fix you up there. Okay. And toss that one over that shoulder. There we go. There you go. And what are you wearing? Oh, well, I'm wearing a necklace <laughs> that I didn't make, oh. but our good friend Robbie um, made Hi, for Barb. Robbie. And um, Barb yeah. probably wore it because I didn't have a finished object on it. Was, no, it's it was really warm. and You did. You oh, do have a finished I object, do. but she didn't want to put it on. It's still hot <laughs> in here. This is my Rosalind cowl. So I finished that just before we went to Minneapolis, and I blocked it. And now I'm casting on a Rosalind sweater. Wow. Um, and that was last month's cow. So I'm a little bit behind, but, you know. Look at the inside. Show us the inside. Yeah, too. so this one's completely reversible. And it's just an opportunity for you to play around with striping and patterning in the Rosalind sweater. Because Rosalind's designed as a do-it-your-own-way do pattern. You can mm -hmm. follow Fiona's instructions. Or you can choose your own path in terms of doing the pattern. Yeah, I love the little, just little dots of color yeah. that you did that's really pretty so it, yeah you know it's nice and cozy and it'll be great it'll be great in the fall yeah when i have my rosalind sweater to go with it well even Being, just you know, as a totally totally tricked out in epic mm -hmm. yarn so i did finish that and then yeah. while we were while we were on the plane i was working on my 
Rock'em Socks out of Hat Trick Semi Solid. Mm. And so, you know. This is, this is a pattern by Barb Brown. Mm -hmm. She's a local designer. She lives just north of here a little ways. And she designs the most the uh, most awesome socks. Knee highs. Knee highs. She's kind of like a specialist in knee highs. Yeah. yeah. And you might so notice I have some funny blue stuff happening up here. I did a provisional cast on mm -hmm. because these are knit cuff down to the toe. And I figured when I was done, I would come back up here and um, take out my provisional cast on and use the rest of the yarn to knit up and have a fold over cuff at the top. Oh, lovely. Because I love to use up all of the yarn and make Which, the socks as tall as possible. So that's hat trick, right? Yeah, hat trick semi-solid. Right. This is barn burner, I believe. The name of it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to go so nicely with my Anne Bud skirt. That's right. <laughs> See, what we've been doing is knitting a lot for this fall. We've got Anne Bud and Hoagie Locatelli. And Susan B. Anderson. And Susan B. Anderson coming. So we've got this, these knit-alongs, and Cynthia and I have both got a hit list of things that we're going to be knitting mm -hmm. in anticipation of these guys coming. And we want and we, you to join us. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. We want to have... Everybody who comes to the store have, you know, an Ann Bud project done or on the needles or a Hohe project. And it's for Susan B. Anderson Susan project. Susan B. Yeah. Anderson. So we're going to have lots of prizes this summer huh. and knit alongs. So it's yep. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, so we'll tell you more about that um, in a little bit. Okay. All right. So that's our works in progress, finished objects. That's where we've been. What we've been up to. Right. Well, there was one other thing. Right. Went, where where did. did you go? That's where week. I got this beautiful cold. I, I went to Comic-Con. So we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Next? Yeah. All right. Great. Okay, so right. we're back. So tell us. <laughs> we had to do a little set adjustment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I, happened at Comic-Con? <laughs> I love Comic-Con. But it was really um, special this year because um, Stash Needle Arts Lounge. So I went to the Comic-Con in Calgary. I had to go there to get Nathan Fillion's autograph because I am such a Firefly fan. Uh, call me a brown coat, but there it is. I just had to go and see him. And um, and we're also wearing Oilers hats, and I was just joking around with you, Barb, that this was like, you know, the Edmonton version of the Jane hat. So those of you out there who know what I'm talking about, know what I'm talking about. I love her ears. <laughs> yes, yeah. my Spock ears. Uh, cool. Because you must knit long and prosper. Yeah. <laughs> And as you can see, I'm full of, you know, geeky project bags. You uh, have because a Star Trek bag. Do, Did you I buy do. me one of those? Um, no, but I bought you something else. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to the Comic-Con in Calgary, my husband and I. I and worked all weekend <laughs> while she went to the Comic-Con. Wow. And um, Stash Needle Arts Lounge was there. That's right. a yarn shop in Calgary. I can't believe that they actually were at the Comic Con. I know. I said to Barb, "We we got to do this in September. Comic Con will be here in Edmonton." And so everybody here who thinks that River City Yarns should be at Comic Con in Edmonton, you must make a comment in the in this podcast so I can convince Barb that it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how much it costs, but they um they had or a really interesting to let us in. I mean, we're really probably not. I think we could totally, okay. I, we could totally rock it, no All problem. Right. But um, uh, Stash had Carolyn uh, Sommerfeld from Ancient Arts Yarn do up two special colorways for for Comic Con. So this okay. is called Logan. Logan, and that's the um, that's the main character in Wolverine new movie coming out. Uh, if you're an X Men fan, this is it. But isn't I, that I color? love it. I think it's <clears throat> beautiful, and this is like a heavier weight. Yeah, this is ah. DK. And, That's uh, so pretty, Carolyn. You did a nice yeah. job on this. And this one's Diana, so Wonder Woman. Right. Wonder Woman's big at Comic Con okay. this year. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just, yeah, my my husband said to me, "What what could you make out of one skein?" And I said, "Something for you." For yeah, sure. mittens. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I don't know if he'll wear this color, but um, I will. No problem at all. Yeah. And then they had they had kits. They had um, all kinds of crocheted amigurumi, Star Wars characters. Um, just, you know, every kind of science fiction storyline that you could think of, they had there. And they had these other kits. And I had to pick this one up because I wanted to bring it back and show it to you. It's a pair of fingerless gloves. But I, um, it's Color by work. Fiona Lovely. Alice, who's from Nova Scotia. 
Um, and, and, you know, we're great friends with Fiona Ellis, who's from Toronto. This is Fiona Ellis. So, and it's just like a little Beautiful. kit with some yarns. And I thought, oh, this is such a great idea. Yeah. We should do this with some of our patterns. You could, know, just could kit we them do up. that one that you have with the, you know, fingers? How do you do that? The oh. Star I, Trek one? That we, yes. So yeah, if we go to Comic-Con in September... Mm-hmm. then definitely we'll do up some kits. Is All there... right, so let us know. What do you think? Is that a good <laughs> idea? <laughs> and then tell everybody why we're wearing these hats. Right. Because we you know, we love Edmonton. Go Oilers. Mm-hmm. We're just so excited. Um, our team is, you know, just playing hockey like crazy. And um, we thought, we, uh, we have this cool hat pattern. Mm-hmm. We have a crochet beanie. Cynthia's mm-hmm. wearing it. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. What's it called? It's called the slouch, the slouch, and it's written by Sandy Price. That's right. Sandy with an I. She's a customer that shops here all the yeah. time, and she's lovely enough lovely to write person. us a pattern. So mm-hmm. check this one out. Knit, knit yourself a team hat. Crochet yourself a team hat. Crochet yourself yeah. a team It's a free hat. pattern. I think mine's knit, right? Yep. Yeah. Yours is a uh, octopus, I want to say. Ah, right. Um, anyway, again, we'll have, we'll have the links to the patterns yeah. in the show notes. Right, yeah. and they're just fun, fun to wear and show your team spirit. Yeah. We yeah. have a free sock pattern, too, on our website, yep. I believe. Yep, or sign up for a newsletter and you'll get that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm really glad you didn't put your toque over your ears. <laughs> you got to be proud of the ears, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay, so what's our theme this month? Color work. Right. Color is kind of always our theme. We yeah. love color, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're wearing Barnstable, which right. is slip stitch color but um mm-hmm. we have a really special project that we're working on right. we wanted to bring people up to speed on that yeah. yeah and yarns to go with it so yeah yeah show us what you've got hey okay. all right this is eliza right and it's a shawl yes it's a color work shawl yeah. done with a yarn called county yeah is do it did i pronounce it right i think so connie connie maybe it's and this yarn right here this uh, comes from Denmark, right? Mm. And it's got long color repeats. Right. So each one of these colors that are inside here uh, goes on for a very long stretch. Like you can imagine how many stitches are along this section. So it's all gold and then it turns into brown and blue. And um, Pat knit this for us. She's our sample knitter here at the shop. Mm. Hi, Pat. <laughs> Uh, she did this with two different colorways. She's used a light gray in this section, and um, and then the, the one yarn that transitions from brown to blue to brown to gold. Right, and this is a shawl. Right, but it's been knit completely in the round. Right, and you can see up the center here is what we call a steek line. Right, so where the yep. This is just yeah. where um, you, we just knit in color, like one gold one white one gold one white right so you change the pattern right there so it's really noticeable because we're going to take a pair of scissors and we're going to cut it right up the center right and then you can imagine right it's going to open it right up and it's going to turn it into a shawl right once you cut it then we'll pick up stitches along the edges and we'll do a little bit of a border um right there just to finish it off right Right. this is something that always causes a little bit of panic in the heart of a knitter, right? I mean, when you, anytime you take scissors to your knitting, you spend a lot of time. So we thought what we might do is do a video on this mm-hmm. to show everybody how to steak mm-hmm. and how we're going to do this one. Right. So stay tuned for that. That's yeah. coming up. It'll be part of our RCY knits, our technical videos um, right. when we talk about things like that. Now, um, this is 100% wool, mm-hmm. and you can kind of feel that it's woolly. Mm-hmm. It feels really good. Talk to us a little bit too, Cynthia, because you're really, you know all about this, uh, about this kind of wool for mm-hmm. this kind of project. Yeah, so w- when you're when you're steaking, when you're doing color work, I love to use 100% wool because it's sticky. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you're, you know, you're doing stranded color work and um, you don't want gaps to show up between your stitches. You want all the colors to just kind of blend together nicely. 100% wool does that. Mm-hmm. And if you um, do strand across the back a little bit tightly and you need to stretch it a little bit, wool, wool has some stretch to it. I mean, it yeah. won't it won't take out everything, but if you're a little bit tight on those strands, it's it's really good for that. Yeah. And then, um, so this is past this knitted. Been blo- blocked? It's been washed it's once, been washed. yeah. So you wash it and you kind of give it a little bit of a rub because you want the fibers to stick together before you cut it 
And we'll also do a little bit of reinforcing along the edges to make sure that the stitches don't come unraveled once mm -hmm. we cut it. But wool has that stickiness to it that kind of, it's not felting, it's just fulling it a little bit. It just causes the fibers to not come apart once you've cut them. And so that makes it just like the, the right fiber for doing color work. Mm -hmm. We've had some people in the past come in and do color work in cotton. And, you know, it looks nice. And for people who don't like the, you know, scratchiness of wool, cotton's an option. Yeah. But it just doesn't look the same. No. I, I just think that wool does wool does such a fabulous job. There's something about that. Yeah. This and, pattern, <clears throat> uh, was just, do you remember who... We'll put um, it in the show notes. Okay. <laughs> I, and now I can remember her name because it's the same as Pat's last name. Robin Gallimore. Gallimore. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's Eliza, E-L-I-Z-A. If anybody uh, wants to find it on Ravelry, yeah. we'll put that in the show notes too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, you, everybody's got to try to make one of these. Yeah. It's just incredible it's, knitting. Yeah. So, you, you, so it looks complex, but it isn't because while you're using two balls of yarn, all the striping is happening completely on its own. Yeah. So you don't ever have to cut your yarn and start in a new color. Um, although I like to do that too. Mm -hmm. so. And we carry this yarn in the shop too. I think we have it on our online store too, don't we? Um, no, I don't no. think we do. Okay. So call the store if you want to know what colors we've got. Right. But then the, the last thing too about this one is that because we're cutting it, you never have to worry about the two fronts of your shawl not matching. Right. You know, because... Everything's been knit around in the circle, so when you cut it, this side matches this side exactly. Yeah, it's kind it's of brilliant. It, it is, yeah. yeah. Sticking is the way that a lot of Scandinavians do their sweaters, mm -hmm. uh, cardigans, right? Because it's it's simple, and yeah. you never have to purl. You know, you don't, you're not turning your work to right. purl back and stranding across the wrong side. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a much easier way to knit a garment like this if you're going to do it. So county's lovely. But county might be considered to be kind of a winter yarn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see this um, on a on a cool summer evening, just Absolutely. draping this over your shoulders. But talk to us about some of the spring and summer yarns we just brought out. Sure. Okay. Uh, so for spring and summer, we've, um, we've got, we like, uh, we, we wanted to bring in some cottons. So here's a couple. This one's by Katya. Did we bring the book up with this one? We no. did not. Okay. This is called All Seasons Cotton, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like a tape. It's uh, It's been... Like a chainette yarn? Yeah, yep. it's been manufactured so that it's like a tube. And this one's sort of flattened out. It's very shiny, too, because mm -hmm. the yarn's been mercerized. Mm -hmm. It's been treated in a way that makes it have a beautiful sheen. Um, the patterns that go along with this are amazing. We uh, sold several of the books today in mm -hmm. the shop. Um, there's a book called Concept 3 from Katya and gorgeous patterns. So you have to check that out. Um, come yeah. into our shop and have a peek if you live in the area and um, pick one of these books up and knit something for summer. It's just gorgeous. And it's a, a DK, approximately a DK yeah. or worsted weight yarn. And the, the nice thing about the chainette construction is that it holds a lot of air. So cotton can be very heavy. And this chain of construction means you get a thicker yarn without all that weight and right. heaviness in it. So be a great for the, summer knitting. Yeah, a lot of the sweaters that are in that book call for between five and seven balls. Right. So it's not heavy at all. These are 50 gram balls. So that's like 250 to 350 grams per sweater. Mm -hmm. Weighs nothing really. Yeah. So really nice, nice alternative to cottons of the past that were a little bit right. heavier. And Katja is a company based in Spain. Spain. The uh, Italians and the Spains do such Spains Spanish <laughs> do such a great job with you, don't they? This is another. This yes, has been flying off the shelves. Right. This yeah. is just crazy. That's because we had it priced wrong. At the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it was a retailer's nightmare. You yeah. put it out on the shelf and think, "Oh, that's a really good price," and then you call your sister and say, oh, "How much is this yarn supposed to be?" And she says, "Twice as much as you've got it." Way before. So, anyways, um, yeah. But it's really, we couldn't resist because this cotton, this is 100% yep. cotton as well. Um, oh, sorry. 55 cotton, 45 viscose, which is also a plant fiber, right? right. Yeah. Um, but the viscose creates this little shine. Each one of the strands you can see has got kind of a, a dull part to it and a really shiny part. Mm -hmm. And that's the viscose. 
Look at this white. I mean, it almost sparkles. It's so. I know. It looks like so beading. Shiny. Yeah. So pretty. That, yeah. That would make this a is the same shawl. company that does uh, Super Ten. Oh, you remember right. we used to have yep. it. Yep. But this one's a little bit finer. This is a DK weight as well. I mean, well comes in gorgeous colors, very jewel tones, mm. beautiful pinks. Yeah. Yeah. So we brought this one in again for little summer tops, shell, um, maybe, whatever, uh, maybe a shawl mm -hmm. out of cotton. I've been mm -hmm. dying to knit the hot shawl. Right, that's right. We, we sort of thought that would be a great project. Yeah, yeah. somebody's got to do that. Bigger, just like just do a bigger shawl, right? Yeah, with, with cotton. Don't change mm -hmm. the pattern except to change the yarn and then maybe the needle size yeah. that you're using and knit it exactly the same way. Yeah, maybe knit the small version in a bigger yarn and just see where it takes you. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. And, and then you, we brought back an old favorite. Right. Yeah. This is Nuna. Uh, this is a Mirasol. Yes. Mirasol is a yarn that we fell in love with several years ago because it's such a beautiful fair trade yarn. And they have a great story if you visit their website. to right. tell you how they're building schools and supporting the farmers who are growing this yarn. A portion of... Uh, the sale of all of these skeins of yarn from Mirasol go to... Um, build a community for kids the, these kids live way up in the mountains and they they you know herd mm -hmm. animals and they're, they're shepherds a picture of a little boy on yes. the side of this one yep and um they can't go into the, the schools are really far away mm -hmm. for them they almost have to travel there and stay there and they can't afford that and so this yarn company is creating um residences for their teachers and for them to live in so they don't have to so travel. they don't have to travel yeah. and the teachers come to them and teach them yeah so it's really a feel-good project you know that um, you're supporting something really great right so this is 40 percent wool 40 percent silk 20 percent viscose right it's a really interesting combination shiny mm -hmm. and soft and we just knit something out of this, too. Oh, did we? I was looking around to see. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did uh, the church mouse um, sleeveless oh, right. shell out of this one. You know, it turned out beautiful. I could go get it. Oh, it's okay. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I could. We'll, we'll put a, we can put a picture up of it, too, we right? We could do that. Yeah. Do that, yeah. So this yarn we love, and we brought back in again. And the Mirasol also has a little book, too, that has um, about six different tops in it. Really pretty ones. Mm -hmm. And this is designed by Jane Ellison, who's yes. a UK designer, and she was on one of our training trips. Um, past she came to our person. shop to yeah. teach. It was yeah. really nice. But we've also used this yarn for a pattern of our own, which we call Queen Vicky's Wristlets, and we always like to bring that one out and knit it around uh, Victoria Day. Right. Um, but we, we've also been using that pattern in the store as a, as a gauge swatch, as a sample. So if you come into the store and you see a sample and it's just a little bit lacier than the others, then um, it's probably our Queen Vicky's wristlets. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's this? Well, the other thing that we've been doing with cotton is we've teamed up uh, for charity and we're giving $2.50 from the sale of all of these kits that we have to yep. Knitted Knockers. Alberta. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody knows about Knitted Knockers. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, you know, Knitted Knockers is, um, it's well, it's a local organization. They're, they're Knitted Knockers organizations across North America. But what, even um, the UK. Is that right? Too, yeah. yeah. Watch. So um, what this organization does is uh, encourages um, us to knit breast prosthetics um, and the breast prosthetics go to women who've had mastectomies. Right. Um, and they're, so this, this is a nice big one. It's made out of um, Cascade Ultra Pima. They want you to use a really nice soft cotton. Right. So Ultra Pima is their, um, their choice of yarn. Mm -hmm. And this is a knitted knocker. Yeah. Um, you can knit it with a nipple or without a nipple. Um, and you can bring it into the store here after it's been done. Mm -hmm. And we collect them. Or, We've yeah. got a we've yeah, got we've a got basket. A basket. Um, we collect them and we send them off to Calgary to Knitted Knockers, Alberta, and they stuff them. They package them up and they send them off to anyone who requests them. Mm -hmm. um, they have so a special <coughs> stuffing that they put in them. Yeah, and they so they like to do that. Yep. And we do the knitting and uh, ship them off to them. And these are something that um, I've had several friends and women who have told me that. 
this is such a nice alternative. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you have breast cancer and you've had the surgery, often you're given uh, a prosthetic. gel filled prosthetic. It's right. hot and sweaty and heavy. Yeah. yeah. And so these are really nice alternatives. So we want to pass the word. If anybody's looking for something like this, get a hold of Dana Knockers. They'll send them out to you for yeah. free. And they're just lovely. And thanks to all of our customers, to all the ladies who have been knitting these. Because right. it takes a small, you know, village to to make all yeah. of them. And well, it's such a great thing to do. Thank it's you. nice. Yeah. It's nice, too, if they can send out more than one pair. Because that way you've got a pair and a spare, right? Mm -hmm. um, something to go... Um, go in the bra when you're washing the other one. So these kits are $15. Yep. Um, they have a skein of Cascade Ultra Pima and the pattern and the is in here yep. as well. And um, like I said, if once they're knit up, then you can bring them back to the store and we'll take care of um, shipping. shipping. And we thought it would just be a nice way to contribute with some actual cash to the organization because they're mailing them out to people all over Canada. Mm -hmm. And I think even into the U.S. and they're paying for it. So this is a way to help um, kind of cover those costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, and that's it's a beautiful yarn. Yeah, that's gorgeous. So, uh, a lot of they say a lot of women prefer neutral colors, but um, you know, having a again <laughs> having a second pair with this kind of like a, a bright color that makes you smile. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. And I think in the box, I've seen lots of pink ones yes. and black ones and red, yeah, teal, yeah, just all sorts. Of that's right. Colors. That's that's really good. So uh, more on that in our newsletter and uh, in the show notes as well. Okay. 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 So, so let's talk about the cow. Yeah. So we've got a knit along coming up, um, and we we want to we want to do a knit along inspired by Anne Bud. Right. Because Anne Bud is bringing her knit for fun retreat here to Edmonton in, in November. November. Yeah. So we thought it'd be really fun, whether you're going to the retreat or not. Anne Bud has. I, I'm just such a big fan girl mm -hmm. of Anne Bud. She's got so many beautiful designs. And we thought we'd try and inspire others to right. make something by Anne. Yeah. We didn't bring up any of her books, did we? No. No. But no. She has a book series called Get Started. And she's got, you know, Get Started Knitting Socks. Well, actually, that's just Get Started Knitting Socks. The other, the series is the Knitter's Handy Book of. Right. Right, right, right. right. So she's got the Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns, the Knitter's Handy Book of Sweaters, the Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters. Yes. Um, she's got like three or four sock books. Um, she's just. They're amazing. Yeah. And on Ravelry, she's got a ton of patterns as well. Right. So we decided to have a little friendly competition between right. us. And so we sat down and we went through Ann Bud's designs and, and we said, yeah, pick one. And then, you know, we'll each knit something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So what did you pick? Well, I love mittens. Mittens are my thing. Mm -hmm. And Ann's got lots of them. So okay. I, I <clears throat> knit up one and I'm going to knit up several pairs. I'm thinking I'll start now and get started knitting mittens for Christmas. Well, in fact, we've got you teaching um, mitten class right. in June. Um, and that's it's our, it's our Anne Bud exclusive design for River City Yarns. Heavenly Mitts. Heavenly Mitts. I'm going to knit a pair of shinny mitts, too. There's two patterns <laughs> that Anne's done. Okay. So I'm going to do a pair of those, too. Show us, show us the mitten. So okay. you actually knit this one. Yes. But you're going to knit another one. I think I showed this on the last <clears throat> podcast. You might have. Yeah. It's, this is uh, <laughs> Heavenly Mitts. I put some beads into them. Right. This is done out of Red Fox, this yarn mm -hmm. from Eden. It's lovely. And then it's got a liner, so it's got, it's double knit. It's so warm. That's right. So, yes, I'm going to teach this class uh, next month and um, do another pair. Right. And I picked a pattern by Ann Bud called Turvy Topsy Socks. Right. Because I like to knit socks. And the thing that um, I thought was really cool about this one is that these socks can be knit either from the toe up or from the cuff down, and she said if you would want to get a, a round second sockitis, you could knit one from the toe up and the other one from the cuff down. They still look the same. Right. So I thought that was really intriguing. That's brilliant, because that. yeah. I'm always, you know, knitting one, and then it sits in my knitting basket somewhere. I never get the second one done. Exactly. So that's a yeah. great idea. So we'll start this cowl on uh, May 15th today, mm -hmm. um, when the video goes out, and we're going to run it for about a month and a half. I think we'll kind of close it up on June 30th. And we want you to knit as many Ann Bud things as you can. Everybody who enters the cowl, that'll be on our Ravelry page. We'll have a thread just for the Ann Bud cowl. Um, everybody who enters is going to get a prize. Yes. 
Yes. Um, but we're going to pick some, well, everybody who enters isn't going to get this prize. Well. Everybody will get a prize if we finish an Anbud project. Mm -hmm. And then we've got these four skeins of yarn that we're going to figure out a way of giving out um, during, during or at the end of this cal. And so the details will be posted on that Ravelry mm -hmm. page. Um, so yeah, pull out your Anbud designs and start thinking about what you'd like to knit. Right. Well, and we started this little competition too. Do you want to talk about that? That's coming up. Oh, you're okay. talking about flash mob competition. No, oh. Peaks in the... oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's coming up right away. Well, let's let's, let's just go right it. into that. Okay. Okay. So our flash mob mm -hmm. for May is a really cool exclusive yarn. Right. It's brand new. Mm -hmm. We just came up with it on this grab one. Okay. It's it's actually based on Eden. I'll talk to it first. Okay. Um, it's mini skeins. So we've come up with gradients that were inspired by some of the colorways with Eden. And uh, Jana from Handmaiden has made us kits. So here's mm -hmm. the first one. So these are gradient kits inspired by uh, our colorways of Eden yarn. Right. right. So here's a great example. This one is Bird of Paradise. Mm -hmm. And so I asked Jan if she could pull out the pink from Bird of Paradise and make us a gradient kit. Right. So here it is. It's from a really dark shade all the way up through a lovely light tone. Right. We have eight of these. Eight of these. Eight gradients. of this colorway in the gradient kit. Like eight of these kits. No, eight different colorways. Eight different colorways, okay. yeah. <laughs> and here's the next cold. one. This one's Eldora. Right. Look at this, you guys. Oh, my God. So you could knit something with this by itself, or you could mix it. We we had a few samples. Right. Let me show this. Right. This is gorgeous. This is a pattern called Around the Bend. And this is made with a gradient kit plus a skein of Eden, correct? Right. So this one's made with Galilea. That's this one. And one pack and one skein of serpent. Right. Right. But so just, we took something with a lot of contrast in it. And um, knit this up. Let me just help perfect. You. No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do oh, this. Lovely. Yeah. Such a pretty pattern. Yeah. It's this yeah. almost looks like shadow knitting when you look at yes. it from an angle. Yes, because the garter stitch mm -hmm. st stitches in there. And then you you did a reverb shawl as well. So we had to um, we had to have some samples knit up because with gradient kits, right? You, we're we're going to get asked, what would you do with it? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is just one gradient kit. Right. Yeah. And I think I used almost all of it. I think I had a little bit of white left over. That's really pretty. Yeah. And it's so cushy and soft. It's just it's, lovely. It's lovely. Now, last month, mm -hmm. the flash mob sold out in something like 12 minutes. Yes. And we had, you know, that was that was a, a real big learning curve for us. And neither of us got any of the flash mob yarn. That's <laughs> we didn't. So this month, what right, we, we we thought, well, we're gonna start early. We cracked into the flash mob yarn. Yes, yes, and we we each bought a package mm -hmm. so that, well, you know, so that we could play with it and show you what to do with right. it, right? And then then we got talking about what would we do with it, other than you know around the bend and reverb, right? And we started to talk about Ann Bud. And the knit along, and the peaks and ridges cowl, and how much we like to hack, and so we decided to hack Ann Butt's peaks and ridges cowl Sorry, using Anne. your gradient <laughs> package. So we're using a thicker yarn, bigger needles. We're gonna, you know, do some fun stuff with yeah. with it. So with show me what you got. Okay, here's oh, mine. Oh, you got more done so, than me. Did I? Mm, yeah, yeah. So here's mine. I started out. This is <clears throat> forbidden. That's this one. Right? Just slightly different shade of it. But. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yep. And I started out with the darkest color. And then I'm on color number three. So I took Anne's pattern and did the, um, the little peaks and ridges and then separated it with 
of three rows of garter stitch. Oh, so it's crazy. like you're starting it every time you change colors. Yeah. Starting yeah. over again. Oh, very yeah. cool. Very so I've cool. got, you know, I don't have a lot. I didn't use a, like the whole thing, but I've got you know, right. that much left. Well, you could probably do two cowls then. Well, you know what I'm going to do? Hmm. I'm going to do a plaid. Remember that oh, class? Oh, I've got wow. some red fox in this yeah. one. Yeah. I'm going to do a plaid project. <laughs> that sounds great. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing. Only I'm striping it narrower than you are. So I'm just on my fifth color now. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And what I'm doing is pulling up one of the peaks of the previous color into the next color repeat. So oh. it's sort of pulling up the color, you know, the lighter color into the next row. Right. And um, we're going to see how that looks. And so then are you going to go, once you're done with the darkest, are you going to go back light? Yeah, I think oh, so. Cool. I think I, you know, kind of like an echo. Because <laughs> this one is, is this one hyacinth? Yeah. That I'm working with? Of course That's it is, right? You had to pick your color. Of course, of course it is. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll put our modifications and our yeah. hacks into our um, Ravelry thread, but also we'll, we'll do up a Ravelry project page on each of these and mm -hmm. let you know how we're doing. Yeah. And uh, show you how I'm modifying an end bud pattern. Right. So if you have more than one project that you're working on, like we could put this into our cow once mm -hmm. for this one, and then the socks could be another one, Heavenly Mittens could be another one. So put as many end bud projects in as you can do in a month and a half, and um, that and then, will give you more opportunities to win more prizes. Right. Yeah. And we think that you should hack this pattern too. So. Yeah. Get a, a copy of Anne's Peaks and Ridges pattern. Yep. Do your own hack to it. It would be fun to see how many different versions we can yeah. get of it. Yeah, you know, like a, an infinity loop or, you know, a really tall cowl, that kind of thing. It would yeah. be really good. Okay, fun. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Um, we always have such a wonderful time when we meet with all of our buds across the world. And uh, thanks for spending some time catching up with us, and we hope you enjoy it. Bye. Bye.